you could paint a picture of what the most ideal, realistic, but dreaming big, ideal vision and reality of the ocean in say 20 years time, like our, our children's generation, when they're able to go off and decide to go traveling and go scuba diving, like what does the ocean look like in a beautiful ideal sense? So I think it will be different from what we see now. Um, so for example, the Great Barrier Reef, a lot of that is gone already. Um, a lot of the whole northern two thirds has been really bleached and continually bleached. So it won't be the same system we see now in a generation, but it can still be a healthy and thriving system if we make a lot of changes. So it can be a system where amazing animals like polar bears and penguins still exist. Um, it can be a system where there are still types of coral reefs. So there is adaptation happening. So for example, we're seeing certain types of corals popping up in new locations. Um, again, you can see it negatively or positively. So they're, they're popping up in new locations because there are areas that weren't warm enough to sustain corals before and now they are. Um, but what that means is you are getting these changing ecosystems where certain species of corals that can grow quickly are growing in new places. Um, certain types of corals that are adapted to really acidic oceans are starting to thrive. So what we'll see is not necessarily complete destruction, like life is really resilient. So it won't be wiped out. What we will see is a whole different range of futures that could play out. But the, the most positive one, I think what we can strive for is a place where as many species as we have now as possible still exist. So we can still travel and see ice caps and see gentoo penguins on those ice caps. Um, it's a place where we have a cooperative relationship with the ocean. So for me, the more I learn, the more this seems like kind of going back to a more indigenous way of thinking. Um, I don't know if you've read Braiding Sweetgrass. I'm reading it at the moment. It's a brilliant book that I think everyone should read. And it's basically weaving together scientific knowledge with Indigenous knowledge. And I think ultimately that's what needs to happen. So it's about looking at the science and the reality of what's happening and understanding systems and how they function, but that can't work independently. That alone is not enough to protect life as we know it, I guess. Um, but when you weave that together with Indigenous thinking and looking at the connectivity of us and the connectivity of all of those systems and how everything's connected and how it all interplays and looking at having gratitude for those systems that support us and giving back to the systems that support us instead of having this one-way extractive relationship. So the way we currently live is very much consumption and us as separate from the environment and taking what we need. But what it needs to shift to is us being part of that environment and for everything we take we're giving something and so we're grateful for the fact that the air is coming from the ocean and we we respect the fact that because we re we need this air we then need to care for that system that's providing the air that we breathe so it's a much more reciprocal relationship 